Hello everyone and welcome back to Disco Elysium. This is episode 16, where last time we interviewed Class J Amondu upstairs of the whirl at the whirling, and then we also acquired a little bit of speed, you know, some hard some hard substance for uh, to split with with Kuno, and we haven't we haven't done that yet. I wanted to think about it because you really it's a it's a tough decision it is a it is a rock and a hard place because it's not so it really isn't as simple as um oh he's a kid i don't want to give hard drugs to to kuno right because he's already a user he's already using uh and he's 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 an addict he's doing it all the time so uh whenever he can, can get his hands on it so he wants it and what, what's hard about this is Either you enable that and you you give it to him and you're giving a kid hard drugs or you keep it from him and then Kuno will then go through withdrawal symptoms and he'll and he'll suffer uh, that way and it's a really hard it's there's literally no moral uh, good choice you know what I mean there's no um, just way to go about it either you you give it to him which is looked down upon or you willingly know that he will suffer without it uh it's 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 hard it's, uh <laughs> and it's it's a very realistic it's a very realistic thing that happens uh in in life with a lot of youth uh growing up and not just the youth either but you know everyone uh so I'm gonna split it with him and see uh, what happens. We're gonna we're gonna go through the rest of the task and, and see it to completion instead of uh, keeping it from him. And I suppose that will also help us earn a little more uh, respect um, with Kuno as well because it's very difficult to get that. So we're gonna continue where we left off with that one. Split it with him and then. Like we have, we have a lot more, uh, we have a lot more to do. And I was having a look at the journal just to check, refresh my memory, um, what we've, uh, what we've got to do. So I'm going to have a look, um, at some of these older tasks that we have to do. Uh, we got to confront the Hardy Boys again with what Class J told us to to check with those. Uh, but I may, while we're here during the day and with Kim, go back over the water lock uh, so we can have a chat with Noid, check out the church, uh, and also have a look at some other things around that area as well. Uh, what's really nice is whenever I load up this game, I'm, I'm so excited because there's always something to do in pretty much every single direction. Uh, the, the world is just constantly like has that feeling that it's just always moving um and i i really love that and it's it's also really nice that uh i, I like the system in the game that time only moves when you are doing something so it's not that constant time pressure uh in in the background so i i really like that it's like you can choose how you want to want to navigate it and then also when we want to get through our ledger and read those older case files we can we can do that when it's uh later on at night and then time isn't isn't uh an issue so let's talk to kuno let's split this kilo and let's proceed uh with the task fuck does kuno care fuck does kuno care he doesn't care all right so i took care of the drug situation all right so you got kuno's kilo here is how we do it first Give Kuno Kuno's kilo, then Kuno gives you half back. That's how we split it. It's the best way, street way. All right, give Kuno the vial. Wow, that's heavy. He waves the minuscule bottle around, then slips it into his coat pocket. There you go. More than half in there. Kuno's fucking honourable like that. More than half in there. Kuno's honorable. There you go. It's been split. We gained experience, a lot of experience, and leveled up. There is no movement on the lieutenant's face as he stares intently at the trash container. And that's that's the other thing. My my little moral compass, my conscience, 
resting on my shoulder, Kim Kitsuragi, who has had to witness some stupid stuff that my character has done uh, most recently with not only taking the speed, almost going to go and beat up this kid's dad, only finding out I don't need to, and then giving said kid drugs. <laughs> but he does not approve. I know. Now tell me, how the fuck are you still alive, pig? <laughs> it would have been, I could have just done this when uh, Kim was, was sleeping, but look, we, we got to do it. We got to get through. Um... And again, this feels like there's many choices here, and I'd like to run through them all for the dialogue. But I'm, I'm especially with Kuno, I'm trying not to push any wrong buttons with him. So I'll do, I'll, I'll go with Kuno. I met your dad. Yeah, you do some sambo shit, sneak in. Is the hooker thing real? <laughs> sambo is an acronym for Samaran boxing, graceful martial arts stuff. Sambo style implies stealth, cleverness and cool just letting you know god i so want to do the joke art so i'm just be like dude kim dressed up full drag distracted him and then it's just like kim uh kuno your dad is a half dead alcoholic he was sleeping under some clothes i, I do kind of just want to go for for both this is this one's like the funny one kim dressed up full drag distracted him the lieutenant Flashes you a sharp look, but doesn't say anything. Only his tightly closed lips betray the effort keeping silent takes him. Fuck out of here. Kuno made that shit up to demean you. His eyes move between you and the lieutenant. Look, pigs. Kuno gets it. You don't want to talk about it. Close quarters combat shit. Kuno doesn't want to talk about it either. Combat trauma shit. He adds after a few seconds of somber silence. I'm just going to say... <laughs> Kuno, your dad is a half-dead alcoholic. He was sleeping under some clothes. What? His eyes become large and round. His posture changes. The swaying rooster motion stops for a second. Then he gets it going again. Reorienting himself. The swaying rooster. Fuck right. Kuno's dad was sleeping like a bum. Kuno told you. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. Fucking breaking and entering shit. That's nothing to Kuno's dad. You got lucky, pig. Kuno knew this. Kuno's fucking violent fiend dad's been drinking hard lately. Kuno knew you have a way in. Narrow window. Kuno window. <laughs> Whatever scary thing he might have been, now he's nothing. Yeah. Kuno's dad is fucking nothing. Fucking coma shit, stroke shit. Kuno's dad is so fucking violent. He's had a stroke many times. Shit. Kuno's gonna have one too. Gonna be just like Kuno's dad. Speed shit, climb shit, fucking on the bed. Kuno's gonna go out like Kuno's dad. Revishol West style. I don't know if that's really what you want to do, kid. Stop saying all this sad shit, Kuno. The whisper comes smaller than usual. There's a touch of grief in there. Mm. Fuck are you talking, sad? <laughs> Kuno's got hard shit, death shit, nothing shit. You don't have to turn into that. Get your fucking nun ass out of here before Kuno fucks it dead. You think because you brought Kuno one gram of speed, you're friends now? Turn into... Kuno ain't turning into shit. Kuno is... Kuno is that shit? If he doesn't stop soon, he's going to collapse from exhaustion. He's red all over. Kuno won! Oh, you won, Kuno! The relief is palpable. The little hat jumps up and down behind the fence. Hmm. Um. I just don't see. Like, these options, like, I'm, I think I could explore them for dialogue, but I'm also trying not to, like, piss him off further by pulling up, like, his name or his schooling, looking down on his life and the bills and stuff, because it's like, fuck, does Kuno care about utility bills, you know? 
I do want to pursue them for dialogue, but also I don't know or feel if they are entirely necessary to run through. Maybe I'll, I'm going to pick one and see see how it goes. Yeah, so fucking what? It says Kuno, not Kuno. Kuno de Ruta. Fuck are you talking to Kuno about that kiddie shit? I like it, Kuno de Ruta. He's trying to fuck you again. Fuck out of here. <coughs> Kuno knows it's fucking lame. That's why Kuno changed it. Kuno can change his name into anything. I'm gonna change my name into f This guy. Don't change your name into that, Kuno. This guy's all over the place. Yeah, so fucking what? Fuck are you talking to Kuno about that kiddie shit? Well, I'm gonna say it's lame now. Kuno knows it's fucking lame. That's why Kuno changed it. You can't fuck with Kuno. Okay. All right, that seems fairly inconsequential. Maybe I'll check the others then. So I looked around in there. It's not the easy life you've got going on in that apartment. The fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the fuck out of here. Predictable response. Yeah, we got plans. Six meters underground, below piping from before the war, the collapsed remains of the Martinez storm drain system. There are two stolen flashlights with piles of batteries next to them. Beside two bedrolls, in the dark, and opening into the lower tunnels. Alright, Shivers. Is that, is that Kuno and Kuno S's living arrangement right now? In the dark and opening to the lower tunnels. Alright, there are tons of unpaid utility bills there. Fuck right there where? Fucking three years or some shit? Let me guess, Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about them? Yeah, that's <coughs> right. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about that electricity and light shit. Just wants to pound on people and drink. Trying to be empathetic or connecting with him never works. It, f it does feel like a waste of time when I when I go into any of that. Kuno's got that shit under control. Okay, let's conclude this business. Yeah, pig. This shit is done. Now get the fuck out of Kuno's face. Kuno needs to drop the bomb. Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> okay. <coughs> God damn it. Well, I don't have anything to do with uh, Kuno right now. That could potentially, you know, uh, if there's any secret tasks or anything like that. But, you know, as usual, we will probably end up revisiting uh, our, dear, our dear Kuno. Um, as we, as we usually do. Now, let's see. Um, in terms of the map with some white checks here, we do have a legendary composer check with, uh, with Renee. Um, have you got anything that's composure related again? We've, we've got a composure on plus one already. Put these boots on for a little more composure. It is a legendary check though, so we'll have to we'll have to see. I'm not sure if I have any more composure outside of that. No. Let's talk to him again. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? Okay, seventy-two percent. I have a thought bubble, so hold on. Something isn't right about this game. Take a closer look. Despite his limp, the man in the uniform moves with efficient grace. His motions are measured and precise. The jolly looking man in the checkered jacket moves lazily, like a giant tomcat stretched out in the sun. Then suddenly he leans forward and uses the zero end of the measuring tape to nudge his opponent's balls further from the small brown sphere in the pit. As he does this, he complains about his back. He nudged his opponent's balls. Apparently oblivious to his partner's treachery, the uniformed man grabs a ball and takes aim again. He's cheating. Interesting. Do we talk to him about the cheating? It is such a pleasure to see you again, officer. How may I head the citizens' militia on this fine day? 
I'm obliged to tell you there's been a breach of ethics. Wink and point to the balls. <laughs> yeah, the bite of the sandwich. God damn it. No, you're not. Enforcing proper conduct in an amateur petong game is not something the RCM involves itself in. It doesn't matter. Kim, cheating in sports is unacceptable. What is? Actually, never mind. I'm sure there's something I can help you with, officer. All right, hang on. Let me talk to Renee first. Vigilance officer. What the hell can I do for you? Dude, the audio thing in the in this in this game is getting even worse somehow, and I I don't know what's going on. Everything about like about the game is is fine. Like it's not broken or anything, but there's just a weird audio issue. It almost makes me think like I've got to update some drivers or do something. Um, it because the game when we started it wasn't doing any of this. Uh, so it's it's really strange that it, it is happening more and more frequently uh, all of a sudden. I don't know. There has been updates uh, that I've installed to the game uh, since in, uh, like since playing it over time. So I don't know if there's something like that. Um, I might have to look into something because there shouldn't be shouldn't be any issues really. But it, the audio thing is kind of bugging me. Um, let's push through this for now and and i might have to have another look at things so 72 percent for composure let's go what is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud still oh. all you see is an old soldier refuses to replace his uniform with a civilian attire anything else i can assist you with officer i can only increase my composure once more, uh, to a total of eight. Look, uh, I, I do know that white checks, it has happened already, that sometimes by progressing or going through the game, white checks do reopen up again later. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother myself too much to level it up to try again. I will wait, uh, I will wait, uh, for an opportunity. Um, that'll open itself up again. Uh, for now, though, I'm going to look into this audio thing again. Uh, so give me one moment, and then we can actually proceed. Okay, so I have a potential fix. I have a potential fix for the issue, apparently. So, it's, uh, not an uncommon issue. Uh, I did just, I did look up Disco Elysium audio stutter. Uh, it is a common issue unfortunately and uh apparently uh weirdly enough it has to do with the game running in full screen so i've just had to switch it to to windowed mode uh and i tested it by talking to renee again and there was no stutter so really just it's funnily enough you i would think that it would be something related to the sound portion of the game but apparently uh the stutter must come from something in the gra on the graphical visual side of things and rendering it in full screen impacts the audio quality strange but we'll run with it the trap is full of locusts but they seem weak and unhealthy a few lie on their backs with their legs twitching still no phasmid poor things i do kind of want to ch uh frequently check the traps when I come over here to see um, if we uh, if we get anything out of that. Now, um, which one was it? Go to the harbor gates. Ask the jolly mesk about the armor. So we also need to speak to um, Manana again about the about the armor. Which I could have done before I uh, before I crossed over here, but alas, here we are. Let me go back up this way. Let me 
check this trap real quick. A few locusts trudge along the wall of the trap. Poor things. Yeah, because these locusts are just going to die when the traps are unattended to. Maybe phasmids go for dead locusts. The trap is filled with dead and dying locusts. Poor things. I don't think there's anything over over this side anymore. Just the firing line mural. This is also a dead end. Spoke to the father and his son before. Let me look at this mural again. You see a once bright mural towering above you. A slogan used to intertwine. Looks like tomorrow never came. Okay. I'm gonna investigate around here. We know that there's something to do here because we can see that they're at the very roof of this building. There's a staircase. Like, there's a, there's a staircase there. There's something that we can do here, but I guess not at this current point in time. We'll have to we'll have to see. But we haven't explored past here yet. I was waiting to have Kim with me before I did any of the uh, the big time exploration up north you pick up the handset there's a tone the machine is operable hey kim you mind if i use this phone again i'm going to call some numbers calling still calling again seriously someone pick up someone with a masculine voice picks up hello gerard speaking hello gerard speaking Hello, Girard. Technically speaking, your electricity. <laughs> Is electricity there? I need to speak with electricity, please. Gerard, what a douche name. Change your name. Is electricity uh, electricity there? No, but I got a feeling Al kick your ass is going to make an appearance if you ever call this number again. Have a good one, asshole. <laughs> Phone hanging up. Oh, wow. <laughs> Disconnect tone. Oh, this is so good. This is worth the, the 10 cents. Calling. 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 Still calling. Still calling. Stop calling me, man. Someone picks up. The voice on the other end is slightly hysterical. I'll get you your money, all right? I just need to tonight. Let me work. Well, this would be a terrible idea to say to him, because then he'll... He'll chill out, and then he's going to be in trouble. Slight change of plans. I want this delivered to the Whirling and Rags in Martinez. Maybe I can help you. I'm a police officer. I feel like all of these options would just... I, I, I love how I'm prank calling, and I get instantly empathetic to this guy that I'm like, no, I don't want to say this, because it might ruin his life. Because he's like, he owes someone money. He's in trouble. So I don't want to... Fuck him up. Who's this? You got the wrong number. Don't call here again. Disconnect tone. Yeah. Um. A single come lets you know the lieutenant is ready to move now. I got too empathetic on that phone call. I was like, oh, I don't want to make him give me debt or say that it's been paid. Calling. That seems rude. I'm tired. A man answers fast this time. His voice is hoarse from cigarettes. You hear typing in the background. Sounds like he hasn't talked to anyone in quite a while. I'm tired too. If I could go just one month without writing. No. Two months. I could regenerate my brain. Fucking liberalism. The man disappears with a sigh. You do not hear the customary disconnect tone. Just silence in the handset. The machine is still waiting for you to dial a number. 
Seems like it did not have time to swallow the coin. This sometimes happens. Uh, wait a minute. We heard a we heard a voice from the payphone, but nobody had picked up the phone. Because we there's no disconnect tone, just silence. The machine is still waiting. Lucky you. The call went too fast for the payphone. Oh, answer. okay, okay. You can still make a new one without paying. That makes sense. Okay, no, 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 that's right. So, so because the phone call was answered so quickly, the coin is basically hasn't been processed yet. For a second, I thought it was just like something too spooky. I was like, Kim, sexy dark mystery to this payphone. Okay. It was a very logical and real answer there. I just thought it was very... I was like... Ghost in the in the payphone. All right, a ninety-seven percent chance. White morning smells like betrayal and a sorry cop. Dial a random number with your eyes closed. Ah! You close your eyes and put your index finger on the rotary dial, then pull down on the number, then move one up, and repeat the motion twice. Imagine failing that check though. Wouldn't put it past me. Strange. This is not how you started before. What did I just do? You dialed 001. This is not the area code of Revershaw. It is another destination on another Isola. Some far off nation state. 005 is Revershaw, ZOC. 001 is Grad on the Gradian Isola, where the telephone was invented. The next two digits you dialed are the area code for the city of Mirova. Keep dialing. Four one four 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 seven. The rotary dial feels, feels cold, cold from the sea air. Keep dialing. One 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 seven three six one. Your fingers keep moving like a spider. Every time the ring rotates back with a little ring of metal, like a bell tolling. There's more. Yes. Four five one six seven four five one. You are going deeper now, into some unknown place, far away from this island of matter and its telecommunication networks. Finish it. 451. You have dialed God knows how many numbers. The headset has been waiting silently to relay a signal. Surely nothing can come of this, you think. <clears throat> but it does. A connection. He dialed 451 three times in that number. An ultra-long distance call. Your air fills with a crackle. The wash of a strange ocean full of white noise. A little bird starts ringing in there. Not like the local calling tone before. No, a small ring in a cage of distortion. Far away. A distant network of phones. Calling. Calling in the night. The saddest sound in the world. Both pitiful and terrifying, you feel your pulse rising with each ring. Calling still. The handset starts slipping from your sweaty palm. Your breathing is heavy. Whoa, what the fuck? Endurance, my breathing is heavy. Kim, volition impossible. Hang it up, 3%. Let it call more. Kim. I don't call more. I'm just wondering if, if I still say Kim, it'll let me go for option number three, or whether I get one chance here to pick something. Kim. The lieutenant is too far away to hear your yelp. The sea wind blows. Let it call more. Calling. 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 Calling still. Mm. Then the ocean breaks. 
Out of the depths, a woman's voice emerges, small, the dearest thing you've ever heard. Hello? Ooh. Ooh. Look at me. Look at my... I've changed. Oh, God. So there's an option to proceed with, I'm a revolutionary servant of humanity. I will free mankind and abolish the classes. I will raise the dead. Oh, your voice is so beautiful. Uh, hello. Uh. She hums, her voice warm from sleep. How is this? Your voice is so beautiful. No, no. It's you, isn't it? That's you. Who is this? Dora. Who is this? The connection is bad. Dora. Dora. The name feels like a gift. A gift that was meant for you. To make it possible to live. In the distorted distance, you hear someone turning next to her. Bed springs rattle. Don't react. It doesn't matter if you react or not. You still think you hear a man's voice in the background. It's covered in pain and white noise. Dora, are you cheating on me? I don't, I'm not really gonna, I'm not gonna say that, because that's weird. I'm a revolutionary servant of humanity. I will free mankind and abolish the classes. I will raise the dead. Equally as weird, but it is the option to proceed. You're not a revolutionary, Harry. You're drunk. Dude. Oh my fucking god. Have I just called my ex? Dude, Harry just subconsciously has called his ex. In grad. Is someone there? Oh, fuck. Fuck. You only have two, maybe three things left to say before the change runs out. Oh my god. The thing is, we're not actually drunk or high right now. Our effects actually wore off. I got nothing going on. My little portrait down here. Oh, fuck. Why does it hurt to talk to you? Now the I want to die thing makes sense. I'm not drunk or high. I'm just hurt. Why does it hurt to talk to you? Hey. Do you know what time it is? It's so late here. It's four o'clock, Harry. I need to wake up in two hours. Apparently I only have two, maybe three things to say before the change runs out. So this phone call is going to end. You're in Morova, right? Yes, I'm in Morova. Sleeping. I want to talk about me. Who am I? You sound like you know me. What do you want to talk about that we haven't talked about already? This is bad. You feel your right hand on the handset crimping up with pain. Jesus. It just feels like every single pathway taking on this call right now is awful. Like, we're just going to start damaging morale and health, like, consecutively. Because Harry's just subconsciously dialed the woman. None of these are good options. <laughs> but also, I don't want to hang up, because this is so intriguing for Harry to have to go through right now. Someone there with you? Yeah. Oh, 
Where are you going in two hours? To work. Where? The academy. Where I work. The Academy? That sounds better than my job. I'm happy. Happy that she has a better job. No response. Only a sigh. The connection crackles like burning paper. My heart hurts. I'm gonna have a heart attack. It's probably gonna end up damaging my health. Oh no. Please stop. Please, let's just hang up. I am the law. I'm a detective. I'm doing a case. There's a hanged man. She does not answer anymore. I'm gonna solve it. Harry. Disconnect tone. The machine ran out of money. She's not going to pick up. Yes. Hmm. A metal payphone under a yellow plastic dome. There's a bitter, caustic taste on the tip of your tongue. As you look at the handset, life is garbage. Honestly, it's like put the 10 cents and dial the long phone number again. So it's specifically there to dial the long phone number again. I might leave that and maybe I will dial that long number again at a different time of the day. Or maybe on a different day uh, and see if there is, uh, see if there's more to that. However, Harry's ex has obviously moved on. Someone else is there. And she knows us very well. And that was not a great conversation for Harry to have. And we just inflicted mental and physical anguish upon ourselves there. Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. Take a closer look. It's streaked with dried seagull shit entangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. Harry, do you want a new jacket? It seems likely that it was left in the surf until someone laid it out on this fence to dry out. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. <laughs> Please tell me you're not taking that with you. Why not? It's a guano-encrusted jacket, and you're already carrying around enough as it is. He's not going to let me take it? Oh, I can take it. Hell yeah. Filthy jacket. I'm taking it, Kim. More for the inventory. Oh, it's, an, it's not a clothing item. It's an interact item. It's just... No, you know, it's just hardcore fashion. That's, that's, a, that's fashionable. Kanye West would wear it. This filthy rag has been at the mercy of the elements for quite some time. It's streaked with seagull shit and abnormally stiff from God knows what natural processes. You can't even tell what brand it is. You interact. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. Man, how did this jacket get so disgusting? It's a sordid, filthy tale. Not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? Some secrets are better left uncovered. Don't even try. Seriously. But that makes me want to do it more. Think about it. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. It smells like a dead sea creature, tangled in grey strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. Okay, but what's the crust made of? Somehow, it was carried or dragged to the boardwalk. If not by human hands, then perhaps the feral dogs that prowl the beaches at night. Okay, that's pretty disgusting. I've had enough. Why? 
Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Ew, flick your hands. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. Oh, damn it. God damn it. <laughs> Nothing good came of that. Composure was right. Composure was so right. A makeshift roof. Vagrants have tried to make the boardwalk habitable. A coin operated weighing machine. Hasn't been used for a decade. Vagrants have recently painted the top red. Water drips from it. Mega Beano's prescription lenses. Plus two encyclopedia, minus one perception. Okay. We got some new clothing. Oh. Oh, there you go. Look. There's a, a little bit of a visual glitch. So with my fingerless gloves that disappeared last time, it turns out they didn't disappear at all. They're right there. Minus one perception on the lenses uh, also <laughs> means that it's uh, invisible. Whose idiotic idea was square and beige plastic frames anyway? Beige is a color that does not look good on anyone, not to mention that seeing the world through these exceedingly thick lenses feels almost nauseating. Discover your inner Beano, nausea-inducing hell glasses. Our perception is already at a plus one, so if by putting them on, um, we get plus two encyclopedia, and then we've just balanced out our perception. What, did I, what were my previous glasses, actually? Plus one empathy, minus one logic. Another postcard, Kuron 33. This one has hell written on its back. It cannot be further from the truth. It's the boon years. Then Kuron, the nicest district in Revishol West, is enjoying a sun-drenched day. Tall and handsome buildings rise from the riverside. Steel, iron and yellow limestone with cloud shadows sliding on the facades. See where we can explore in this place. Big wine canister. It's open and empty. The smell. It's awful and familiar. Awful and familiar. Hold on, that is awful. Cover your nose. It doesn't help. You can still smell it. What is it? Don't you recognize it? That idiotic pungency. That faintly cloying um, sweetness. Only death smells like that. Did this guy, this guy die here? I thought this might have just been a dude that was... I saw the bottle, so I assumed it might have just been another drunk. But taking a look at the uh, complexion of the skin there, it looks pale as hell. We've got, I think we've got another dead body here. Only death smells like that. Awful and familiar. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. It is death. It must be. Kim, what's that smell? Heads up, Lieutenant. Something's not right here. The Lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. There's some tear. An empty cigarette package and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Examine the tear. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some pills in the bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Examine the cigarette package. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Red Astra is the black market version of Astra cigarettes, known for their high tar content. Examine the kebab wrapper. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it, as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads... Shish kebab, Revachon. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. Okay. 
I'm going to check the, my surroundings before we start focusing on the body. This coin-operated viewer has been out of order for years. Now, we had another thought here, so let's check that. These floorboards... Okay, careful there. These floorboards look rotten and weak. Stop messing with the coin viewer and hold on to something. The wind is so strong. <laughs> okay, here we go. A man lies on the boardwalk. His limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Chewing gum wrapper, is it apricot? Man lies on the boardwalk. God damn, look at that. Working class corpse. Half of his body has slipped between the cracked boardwalk, starting with the right leg. The fall has left him broken, contorted like a sad puppet. The smell is not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. The lieutenant squats next to the corpse and examines his face. Two bulging eyes stare back at him, void of any sign of life. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, has been dead for two days. No longer. We need to investigate. Two days, huh? Another dead body. This is your job. Steal yourself. So this happened while we've been here, but also while the water lock was busted. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. Study the man's clothes. He's wearing mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. Search his pockets. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain-soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. Study the man himself. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. A bad fall. It might have been dark outside. This place is a minefield in the dark. When damp, these boards are really slippery. Even a sober man could lose their balance here. Examine his face. His expression is dull, like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his moustache. His eyes, empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60 years. He was just about to head home. The first step back home proved to be his last. God damn. That's what the chewing gum seems to point to as well. Study the surroundings. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. Be very, very careful where you step here. Examine the man's head. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is what killed him. This is where he came out of himself, drop by drop, when he was unconscious. It took three, maybe four minutes. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? It's hard to say. Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. So like foot slipped in the in the floorboard, smacked his head on the bench. Concussion, unconscious, dead. Examine the bottle. A 0.75 liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. Tear all around us. Examine the chewing gum wrapper. Rubowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. Look in. The blackness of death. Stench. 
You think you see white chewing gum, too? He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario, even the chewing gum. It's always the same. Maybe that's what the apricot chewing gum ties in with Harry's. Harry's done that before too. Step back, because we're not going to step on the floorboards. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Unless you step back on the floorboards and fall through it too. Who is this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. You look south the way you came. I'm glad that I've got Kim with me now that I pushed forward, so it was good for me to hold back on exploring too hard without him. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? This is an omen, a sign from above, that you need to stop drinking. It looks like me. I could have ended up just like him, dead on some empty boardwalk with a bottle next to my corpse. Well, at least you're not married. <laughs> my morale is taking hits this episode. God damn. Well, that's why we had all those charges saved up. The lieutenant points at the ring on the man's hand, the flesh around it swollen and grey. Or, what if you are? I might be. But let's try to not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. What do you think happened to you? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Do you think he was drunk? Oh, yes. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's related to the lynching, but i uh, ask the question anyway. No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and related to the murder case. Yes, but what if there's a killer on the loose? Two suspicious deaths in such a short time frame. You're right. Connecting it with the lynching is a stretch. Without any further evidence, yes. But what about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. Right. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. Although there's still a question of identifying the body. We got, uh, we got, we got some ID. What should we do with him? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own. Or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. Hold on, what about field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal. And this looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma in the autopsy report and leave it at that. It would save us at least two hours of unnecessary work. You're right. I don't see anything criminal here. Let's, let's leave it at that. Good call. The guys at processing can take care of the rest. We found him. We should finish this. Let's take the case. All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. Side case. Let's go, dude. Side case. A library card found from a pocket of the dead man on the Martinez boardwalk. It's still slightly damp to the touch. Uh, the cover bears the stamp of Jamrock Public Library. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Jamrock Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean, expires July 53. Billy Mejean, July 53. Billy is a unisex name. 
could be the deceased or his family member. Interesting that the library card may not be his own. Look inside. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers, too. Okay. Look at the back side. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005 5511 or visit us at Moreau Street, 78 Jamrock. Business hours, 900 to 1800. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. Okay. Good idea. There was plenty of information here to go by. Put it away. Okay. Dead body. So call the station and call Jamrock Public Library. There you go. And be careful where we're standing on the boardwalk so we don't fall through and also smack our head. Moonshine, probably. Smells like tasty fermentation. Damn. Okay, so exploring just a little bit, a little bit further up here brought us uh, a very unsavory encounter with, with a dead body. And luckily we haven't fallen through the fallen through the boardwalk at all. No, this is such a this is such a sad game. There's just tragedy everywhere with all of the characters with the like just like the locations, just everything is just falling apart here. I think that this is a dead end. That's as far as we go there, so we'll head back to the Kanema. You can imagine why calls become terrible sometimes. Winter, slow to let go of Rivershaw. Flex some more wet snow from above. Look around you. The snow falls lazily, making the beach sand paler still. Mix in with the rust-colored sewage runoff. And to think, it seemed as though it were already spring. How does it feel? You're warm in your coat, though your cold, damp hair sticks to your head unpleasantly. You should have a hat. You survey the landscape around you. What's in the west? More winding coastlines lined with abandoned buildings. Crumbling piers, salt water lapping at their dark piles. Grey and red forgotten city blocks what remains of the pre-revolutionary effort to gentrify the coast. And beyond that? The waters turn black. Coal city in the shadow of San Martin. A boom town. Back when coal extracted from countless shafts near the city was needed to power Revachon. No more. The coal was supplanted by petroleum from the ocean floor and hydropower from the Esperance. Everything crumbled. These days, only the weakest remain in Coal City. Their hopes of getting rich linger in the defunct shafts under their feet. What is there? Below the old mines, Losser Municipal, Revachel's underground cemetery. La Petite Va braved the underground passageways, trying to get to Le Royaume. Le Petit Rats. Children under 14, they go underground looking for artifacts to sell to foreign museums and for fabled relics. Their parents let them. They go deeper. Deeper? After rubies, melchiorite, lapis lazuli, plundered from Safre and Seol during the time of the suzerain. In the burial chambers of the kings, grand old Philip, Guillaume II, and even in the mausoleum of Philip the Opulent. Two kilometers underground, in a winding shaft along whose walls mirrors have been placed, so that daylight may eternally fall upon the richest of all the kings. 
The mausoleum contains untold quantities of gold, and that special, purest of the pure magenta cocaine, favored by Revisholian royalty. How can it be pure if it's magenta? How can it be pure if it's magenta? Snow falls, and there is no answer. Some things are not for mortals to know. Okay. Wipe the snow from your shoulder. Few Patira return from the shafts. Even fewer find what they're looking for. A small child steps out of the black tunnel with silver trinkets in her pockets. All around her, white snow on the extinguished coke furnaces and on the weather-worn shacks where fathers beat their sons after drinking. The snow melts on your fingers, turning to water. All of that from the west. What's in the east? The canal you crossed to get here and beyond it. Martinez proper. The district. The police forgot to police. There is laughter. Lights. Attempts at entrepreneurial activity. Cynicism. Someone is scraping snow off their windshield. At the roundabout. In the midst of which a statue of Philip III serves as a destination for grade school field trips and a fine perch for winter birds. That's all? Like all monuments, it's also a warning. Six-story ruins on the south side of the roundabout cast a long shadow over the profligate king. And further? A fenced-off yard. There's a truck belonging to a logistics company parked next to the gate. Bright light from a building behind the fence reflects off its hood Clean white light coming from the windows of a clean cube-shaped office building hidden amidst ruins. A secret. What's in the north? The abandoned church. One of two remaining stave churches which were collectively called Le Set Sur. The other six sisters were destroyed during the revolution. And further north? A serpentine strip of land weaving its way into the Martinez Inlet. Unfortunates on the run, from the law, from themselves, sometimes hide out on nearby islets. Little dots in the ocean that are occasionally submerged when the tide is high and the weather foul. And on the islets? The remains of a camp on a jagged piece of rock, a tent, old dishes and cutlery, long since abandoned. A hermit crab scuttles among the debris, looking for a new shell. Further out, the lights burn bright on Resurrection, way beyond Martinez, a popular spa destination for ample-bodied Ozon kids with equally ample pockets. And on the other side of the inlet? Then there's Ozon, but the snow falls too thick. You cannot see that far. Before that, before the curtains are drawn. The Bay of Revachon, vastness, great depth, over 1,200 meters, at its deepest, water air brinier than hair. It is crisscrossed by huge cargo ships bearing company logos. Wild pines, Zam, Morien. And at the farthest reaches of the Bay of Revachon, the shadow of the coalition warship Archer, on perpetual patrol duty, ready to unleash artillery fire if you were to rise up against the market. You shudder. What's in the south? The raised motorway, 881, separating Martinez from Jamro. Vehicles whoosh past one another, day and night, while those who reside in the labyrinthine alleyways beneath the motorway attempt to carry on with their lives in the snow and the slush. And south of the 881 is the Pox. The Pox? Was once a park a place for reflection and recuperation for the patients of the old military hospital. In the 20s, it was used as a quarantine center during a measles outbreak that killed many children. Most everyone has avoided the hospital and surrounding park ever since. The pox is completely wild now. Evergreen thickets covered in snow and industrial dust. Feral dogs and even wolves roaming in packs. The police try to keep the deepest corners cordoned off. But still... Heavy drug users do slip through and hole up in the old military hospital. 
hoping to find something to get high on among the hastily abandoned supplies, or just to overdose in peace. Further south. A line of motor garages with armored carapaces hunched in the cold. A mechanic is hard at work, patching up bullet holes in the side of a Capri 40. These are the garages of Precinct 41. Snow settles on the roof of the repurposed silk mill. It serves as your station. Shivering RCM personnel hurry in and out of the main entrance. Around you, the snow continues to fall. To the west, the ocean swells. No, it was home. I want more. The stairs descend to Central Jamrock. A man named Cooklove has a snow-covered stall there in the market across the bridge. He sells kebab infested with fly larvae to your colleagues who believe eating it will make them immune to food poisoning. Good for the immune system. Snow falls on the utility district, the library, the florist, the Sarah Mauritian restaurant that offers homemade wine, and also on the brothels and drug dens and the chop shops of the Zemnyaki. All of this built around a lake that formed in a meteorite strike. At the center of this lake, there is a little ship. There are lights at the bottom of its hull. They are lights directed toward the seafloor, looking for something, like whiskers. For what? A chill comes over you, crawling down your back. The sand under your feet is wet. Somewhere in the south, tarpauling flap in the wind. What's above? More coalition aerostatics. Occasionally, lights flash as they maneuver through the falling snow. One large airship carries crates in its belly. And what's below me? Layer upon layer of sand, poisoned with industrial runoff. The storm drainage, hidden bunkers, rats scuttle. Tell me a secret of the sands, wind. Someone stuffed a big old polar anorak into a concrete pipe under the boardwalk. It would keep you warm. You would probably never happen across it, but who knows? Stomp your feet for warmth, brushing off the snow. Finish thought. We should keep moving. Who knows when the snow will let up. Damn. We got some, some big directional shivers there in every every which direction. Those shivers checks really do really do uh, get you by surprise. They come at you. And it's like, here you go, you're about to get your get your brain wrinkled. Now, while we're here. Gotta sink the signs with Nord. Come on, get in. The warm stuff's getting out. Sorry, we barely have room for one. He points his thumb at the lieutenant. Ah. Uh... I'm too old for this. So. Actually, not, he thinks. <coughs> I just dislike delinquents. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch. Guess just for you to squeeze in. So Kim wouldn't have Kim wouldn't have come in here anyway last time. Interesting. Only room for one. All right. Let me talk to our boys again. The large-headed youth has closed his eyes. Good morning, comrade! Yeah! Yeah! There's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes I do. Isn't something holding it? It's like it's... I think it's super hard. If trying to remember something here... A bit proto. I think there was... It's not fully formed yet. There was something to do you here. might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you are pretty certain a thing cannot be both Proto and hardcore. I remember there being something here that I could still go with with our uh, lovely egghead. It's proto, not hardcore at all. Wow, culture cop! I think you might be right, but how could it become hardcore then? I know it in my heart, but cannot sink it in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? Sounds suspiciously like a question. I thought the question was, what is the question? No! This is the answer! Try to think if anything could make it harder, Core? What? Guys, there's something happening in his head. Think even harder. Oh yeah! He's doing it! But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. My imagination fails me. <laughs> Wait, I just remembered something. I'm the police. Uh huh. 
Actually, it's more likely to hinder us. Me being the police isn't going to help us. It's more likely to hinder us. Oh. Okay. I need something else, something extra. Yeah! Kill the rich people! Huh? He's not even the slightest bit disappointed. Hang on. Physical instrument. An expert on anodic music. Challenging. May maybe your body can tell you what Arno Van Eyck's jam is missing to make it harder core. It's a white check that we can retry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to at least increase my physical instrument first before we go and uh, potentially have to waste something to, um, you know, level it up. So let's let's go for the physical instrument increases. It's minus two, so we definitely don't want that. I think it might just be... That's pain threshold. All right, it's just that. A little more physical instrument is something. The launch hit. Good morning, comrade. Fifty-eight percent. You know it in your lungs. Nice. The pressure should vibrate in your heart. That's alone, and in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every chordate animal. Needs more bass. What? Like <laughs> the young man makes a sudden move, like he's about to turn the volume down, but that would be ridiculous. And a melody. A melody is what makes the song really stick, so that you can't get it out of your head anymore. Wow! Okay! We should start with the melody. But where would we get that stuff from? I don't know. I was thinking you would know. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about anodic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. He feels ashamed. He can't be of more service to the future of dance music. All right, I'll see if I come up with any with something on my own. A citizen investigation. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile, as if it could hinder your investigation. Make Van Eyck's jam harder core. Find a tape with a melody for Egghead. Okay. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it, so that Egghead could use it to remix Van Eyck's jam. Yeah, maybe that street talker across the pawn shop has got some tapes to sell. That's just an idea. There is a hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's lane, right next to the canal. A reel of magnetic tape is caught in its branches, like bronze ribbons blowing in the wind. There's a tree, a reel of magnetic tape is caught in its branches. It feels cold. Does it? Rue de Saint Gis uh, Ghislaine, I've been there. Oh, I know! I know this! I can tell you where it is! Saint G is the boulevard before the canal bridge. The one that takes you to the whirling in rags in the industrial harbour. It's got the lanterns and the... I knew that! I could have said that! And the mosaic sidewalk. But it's all blocked with that stupid traffic jam right now. Anyway... Okay, shake it off. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, cop man. Man. I do have a tape with me, but uh, let me see what it is. It's an em oh, it's just an empty cassette tape. It was destroyed in a fit of rage. It's empty, so I do not have a tape with me at all. All right, let me let me take off my uh, physical instrument top. Put that one back on. Okay, let's talk to Noid. Talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noid. He stooped over his toolbox as usual, shuffling bolts around angrily. That's fine, man, but I've got to warn ya, our signs are still off. It'll take some time for me to get my scion. Scion, but I thought we'd be okay now, sign wise. I'm doing what I can. He continues to rearrange his tools. It's not easy for him. It probably took him years to get used to Andre. He looks like a well-thought-out individual. The synchronization might be worth it in the long run. Okay. Tell me about the machines you saw in the church. Weird stuff. Specialised. There was a data processor and some sort of long-wave machinery. Wires going into water. Gives off a spy sign. 
or some fucked up Samaran science site. You know, the kind that goes head first into the supernatural. Okay. The People's Republic of Samara is a product of Revachal's sister revolution on the Grand Isola. It's known as a severely degenerated rogue state. Wrong with the supernatural? Nothing's wrong with it. You should definitely be researched. You can still do sick shit with it though. The sickest? That's perhaps why it should be researched. So this is don't be too hard on Samara, they're all alone in the world. Half of what we know of them is just propaganda, which means like don't buy into all you know. I know, man. I was just talking about the aesthetic. The supernatural, so you think it's real that it actually exists? Most of it doesn't exist. But there's also stuff that isn't allowed to exist because the moralists think it's too dangerous for the plebs. <laughs> Sonic powers, pale related diseases, pretenders pretending to be human, folk rights, that kind of stuff. Okay. Why are you called Noid? The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. He picks up some sort of widget. It's not easy to reach here harmonic resonance of signs without some adjustment. Okay, maybe I'll come back later. All right, so syncing the signs with Noid is actually probably gonna take a little more. You need to help him and his friends out somehow to prove that we're part of the crew. So I've got to do more church stuff. I got to do more church stuff. There you go, okay. Cell refused to talk about her friends, but if we help them set up the nightclub, she may open up about that as well. So we'll have to just we'll have to just come back for for all of that before anything else happens. I assume. But while we're here, let's see if we can check out this church. Um, before we do, I'm just going to take a quick break, and then we'll resume. All right, let's proceed. Let's have a look. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, carelessly drilled into the wood. Inspect the carpentry. The carving on the door is block-like and angular, like the church itself. Two large beams shoot downwards, sinking into the wood before they reach the threshold. Run your hand over a beam. The surface is smooth from the wind, but moist to the touch. Let's take a closer look at the padlock. This cheap looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed into the wooden door. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. It'll be easier to break the staple than the lock. Also, that sticker is interesting, somehow. Look at the sticker. You see a yellow circle with two X's and a big curve below them that looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before, but what the symbol depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy. The curve makes it smile and the X's make it dead. Okay. There is something blindingly modern about this symbol. Its modernness puts to shame everything you've seen before. It's the Nirvana logo. Oh my God. What makes it so modern? It's the contrast between the cherry chemical yellow and the rigor mortis. As if the cherry guy didn't know he was dead or the dead guy didn't care that he was. Either way, you get the sense the forces of future are at work here. Have you seen this symbol before? He takes off his glasses and uses a blue handkerchief to thoroughly wipe them clean before inspecting the sticker. Then he looks up, pauses, and replies. No. What does it look like to you? Looks like a dead man smiling. Suggests junior delinquency. Okay, what is junior delinquency? For Revachol ZOC, the moral intern defined junior delinquents as minors between the ages of 10 and 16 who have committed an act in violation of the law. 
These acts aren't called crimes as they would be for adults. Crimes committed by minors are called delinquent acts. This was part of your officer's exams. What is suggestive of junior delinquency here? I haven't seen that sticker before, and I'm not a youth. Padlock, padlock, padlock. I agree, it's very modern, but does the cheery guy not know he's dead, or does the dead guy not care that he is? What is the source of the irony here? That level of conceptual thinking is not part of my skill set. Interfacing easy, nice, try to peel it off without ripping it, cool. Before we do that, 83%. And we can, interestingly enough, we can retry it. Retrying peeling a sticker seems like a hard thing, but I'm going to look at the sticker again. And then I want to ask, take another look at the boring padlock for absurd, absurd, absurdity's sake. This cheap looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles oh. It'll be easier to break the staple than the lock. It's the same thing. <laughs> that sticker is interesting, somehow. Okay, try to peel off the sticker without ripping it. There's nothing like the sound of a sticker unpeeling. Now it's stuck to your thumb. Hmm. On your ledger, right on the cover, or in your ledger, after the last entry, where it belongs. So tempted to put it, like, on the cover. Put it on the cover. Voila. Looks very modern. Style your paperwork. Secret task. Okay. You're part of the future brigade now, and so is your formerly humdrum ledger. Neon, baby. I love that seemingly just tiny, inconsequential things lead to just some very entertaining outcomes. Let's open the padlock with the key. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Let's go. Pull on the doors. As you do, you hear the echo of the doomed commercial area. It's black holes and dusty machines. Then the feeling passes. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum. In the heart of the city. In we go. Crab man. Oh, that's so beautiful. Wow. Wow. A strange stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. The music. Alright, let's walk. This grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. It feels like it's trying to become one with the church. More of the forked lightning pattern you saw outside. Bark beetles? No, it looks intentional. Some long-forgotten style. The blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. That's a pale thingy. That's a... was it? The... not a pale thingy. <laughs> uh... Ugh! It's like a... it's one of the radio computer things. Like the, the one upstairs in the abandoned commercial area that we put like one of the, we put the cube thing in. I've got another one here. The bowl is filled with water. A live wire runs directly into it. A spider has spun its web around this wood carved pillar. Just taking my brain's advice to walk in here. Look at that massive window. Ooh, mesk bangers, red uh, brogues. Hmm. Empathy. Dapper snakeskin shoes have an almost invisible white-on-white -white flower 
motive sewn on the tongue. The toe caps are still dusty from lying in the church. So either we can have more perception or we can have a little more empathy. Our empathy is already at a plus one. I'll keep my cavalry boots on for now. Keep the cavalry boots on for now. Never know when I'll need to be empathetic with someone. Being perceptive is good too. A cracked pane of glass, colourful. Frost has drawn flowers on the glass, obscuring the view. A figure drawn in frost on the window, depicting a deer. More clothing. Meskbanger's silk scarf, pain threshold. Now, I currently have uh, and have decided to keep on the horrific necktie because there's a task apparently that is involved with keeping the necktie on uh, and something to do with uh, the spirit. Spirit is eternal. By the spirits from Rosemary, the horrific necktie is getting ready for the end game. For the love of God, do not remove it till the magic happens. And I'm pretty sure when I bought the spirits, I didn't have the necktie on, unfortunately. I had the bow tie on. Uh, so that's kind of like, I probably missed something here. But I do have a task here. So I guess I'm, I'm just keeping the necktie on because of that. And then I, I think something may happen. We'll see. Uh, this huge red scarf is still dusty from lying in the church. A subtle red on red embroidery embellishes it with, a co with cocky roosters and mesk floral motives. Uh, I wonder uh, if we talk to Manana wearing this and the shoes would um, have any uh, dialogue to it. Pain threshold, bangers don't cry in someone else's shoes. Love that. It's a great description for, for a, an empathy increase the silence in this part of the church it's almost palpable all the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore no crab men maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot even your footsteps would be completely silent interesting because we're in the middle of like a circle made by the plates wait I think I still hear something. And then it's gone. Almost all of it. But for the faintest of hums. It seems the sound here is detached from its source somehow. If not blotted out outright. Truly unusual. Sounds like the pale. How do I know what the pale sounds like? From recordings of the far pale. You've heard them. We all have. You can hardly hear your own breathing. Yell as loud as you can, or stomp your feet and clap your hands. I'll go for the second one. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total, somehow. Yell as loud as you can. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. Mm. It's unnerving. Turn to Kim. What's happening? The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head then he leans closer can you hear anything wow what the fuck almost nothing and it's beginning to worry me the church just has strange acoustics some engineering trick his detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is how are you going to have a nightclub in here where there's no sound in a specific spot Whatever it is, it's definitely real. Something odd is happening around us. The lieutenant doesn't reply, but you can sense him tense up next to you. Look up into the bell tower. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. This is so funny that I was like, I want to keep my perception boots on. It's good to be perceptive. There's a perception check, but it's a red check. And I think... I don't know if we're going to miss the opportunity here because it says, what if I don't want to know what's up there? Ah, we could have... I'm, I'm wearing glasses that decrease my perception. Oh, I really want to know. Can I still do it? What if I don't want to know what's up there? The silence. Ah! The darkness. They've enveloped you as in a cocoon. You cannot move anymore. 
Oh, I really want to. I really want to know. This is so compelling. Forty-two percent. Oh my god. <clears throat> okay, it's just under fifty-fifty. Oh, it stings knowing I could have this be a higher percentage with those stupid big glasses that I'm wearing right now. Damn it, red check. Oh, yes! God, thank you. I really wanted to get a handle on this one. Yes. It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and it's making its way toward you through all the other shadows. The crab man. On the ceiling? Yes. The darkness makes the ceiling feel infinitely far away. Follow the shadow's movements. It's not a shadow anymore. Becoming more substantial as it gets closer. The shape of an animal descends. Officer, is there something up there? The lieutenant follows your gaze, attempting to see whatever it is that you're seeing. Oh no. You've lost sight of it. Where did it go? Blink. Oh, it's a, the, the game blinks too. Ah! Dude. You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. It's a man. But not a crab. Or is it? A man. in the, A crab in the form of a man. Maybe it's possible to talk to it. Oh, look at that. Tiago, look at that portrait. Wow. Ooh, and the sound is going real weird. Ooh, the sound is going real weird. Okay. The shadow is a man. A man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. A man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. The crab man. The crab man. Hey, who's there? The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. You come to the right place. That accent is Villa Lobos, a peninsula in Mesk and a district in general. There's a sizable contingent of Villa Lobos speaking Mesks in Rivershaw. The right place for what? Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready... She will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that bottle. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? I'm put off by this religious stuff, he thinks. And maybe the ceiling climbing, too. It's all very hard to square with the lieutenant's own view of reality. Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Sheesh. <laughs> oh, hell no. I'm a policeman. I need to talk to you about police things. I don't know anything about alcohol use. Oh, yeah, sure. You don't know anything about alcohol use. You got it all under control, way. I could smell the control all the way over here. Okay, fine. I'm struggling, but you don't need to lecture me. I know what I need to do. I'm, or, I'm doing just fine, thank you. I know it's hard to admit that you got a problem. I was like you once. Couldn't take an honest look into my own heart and see I was in pain. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what <sighs> the ceiling climber is saying. Thanks, Kim. Adjust your tie. <clears throat> who do you think you are? Some crazy guy under the roof? What is this shit? It doesn't matter who I am, Wei. I'm just bringing you the message of the mother's love. She don't want you to hang yourself on your own stubbornness. His words echo in the cold air of the church. She don't want you to hang yourself on your own stubbornness. This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. 
Church of the Mother of Silence. You have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Is he just trying to throw you off your game? Whatever it is, he's quite confident about it. Just look how gracefully he sways. Tis not an act to my liege. Save him perchance, he hath deceived his very self. This man is a zealot. You must be the crab man. Never known myself to be a crab. But if that's the name you got for me, I won't stop you from using it. To be fair, it's really more like a spider. I always thought of myself more like a flame, flickering along the rafters and beams. It may be that I gotta work on my technique. That's not the only technique he's working on. Look at those carved sculptures. And is that a satchel of tools over there? Wait, did you also carve all those sculptures? Sure am. Whittling wood used to be something I just did to busy my hands. Now I use those same hands in service of something greater than my own restlessness. You got some nice, uh, curves going there. It's all just for the mother, man. No need to overthink it. What were you, uh, before you became a crab man and a woodcarver? I was in a gang way, but my memories of that time are fading. Most of them are already gone. So many people losing their memory. A certain portent of doom. Nah, Esse. It's not like that. Best thing that could happen to you. Losing your memory. Do you remember your name, sir? Tiago's my name. But those syllables don't mean much to me these days. A name isn't just your identity. But also, so to speak, your place amongst your fellows. Your place in the world. I ain't got no use for such a place anymore. Let's go for the first one. My name's Harry. Extend your hand for a greeting. That's just the thing, Holmes. None of that matters. Mm. He ignores your hand, his limbs a mere shadow below the ceiling. What are you doing here? This is a special place. There's a perforation in the world up there. A way out into nothingness. This church was built around it. For purposes of veneration. I circled it, nurtured by the silence bestowed by the mother. One of these days, I'd be pure enough to go drink from it directly. Who's this mother of silence you keep talking about? Oh, that's no simple question, Essa. She is one who can be painted or sculpted. She is a cavity in the dark beyond sense. She saved me. But I couldn't describe her to you. No one can, Holmes. And no one ever will. What will happen once you drink from this perfor uh, perforation? I will be incinerated, but not destroyed. Finally, I won with the state of the world before reality began. That sounds a bit like substitution behavior, no? You know a thing or two about that. I still don't understand what you're doing in the church. I'm a seraph, Holmes. I sing the mother's glory. It doesn't really make sense for you to sing if she's the mother of silence. Can you sing for me? Sing for me something. I am from No Marietti, <coughs> if that's what you're thinking. And the song I sing is Silent as the Mother. Okay. Marietti is a mesk style of music and dance, commonly seen at all manner of festivities. Especially weddings. It's delightfully quaint, owing to its peasant origins. He lost his cool there for a moment. Seems you hit some nerve. Hmm. How did you even find this place, this, this church? Hard to say. I think I did some construction work here. Back when I still had material worries. Up there, I realized what the true purpose of the church was. 
been spending a lot of time here ever since. The past is nothing to me now, way. It didn't belong to me. You sure you didn't just switch one drug for another? It's not like that at all, man. It's just faith and joyful service. Too gleeful those words. He is lying. Not to you. To his very own self. Faith is a kind of drug. I heard that before, Wei. And I know I can't convince you on the spot. But think. When's the last time you woke up from silent communion with a hangover? Regretting what you did last night. There are drugs darker than alcohol circling your system. I think love might have been my drug of choice, and I think I'm still hung over from it. She took you for a good spin, huh? Don't worry, bro. That love is but a drop compared to the ocean of the mother's love. The mother will eat all of you and never spit you out. Let's agree to disagree. I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. Are these yours? I know it will take time. Don't sweat it. You said okay, you said that. Are, are these yours? Show him the scarf and, and shoes you found lying around. I think they were. A long time ago. I had to shed them like skins. To get closer to the center of the silence. You could have them. I don't need them anymore. Okay. They'd only stop him from climbing. Okay. They look pretty dapper, actually. Right. I had other questions. The sinewy figure lingers on the wooden beams, blending into the shadows. Do you know where the other spooker is? Point at the strange machines around you. Other spooker? Oh, esa viejita es muy estudiosa. <laughs> Don't know, Holmes. The Aita is... Grandma? Okay. Wait, so there is another person living in the church, and it's a Vieta? No. I just call her Viejita because of her clothes. She's actually quite young. Or maybe not that young. H is just one of the many masks we wear. And you don't know where she is? That's what I say, Holmes. How can you not know that when you both live here? Don't really follow her comings and goings. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. So you've got nothing else to tell me? How she looks? What she does? Who is she? I'm afraid not, Esse. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... Or search through her radio computer. Hmm. Some ravers want to turn this place into a nightclub. The ones in the tent outside? Right? I see them. Guessing they're the ones who call me a crab. Probably scared of me. Wait, do they have a reason to be scared? Nah, man. They look pretty funny. And I don't harm no one anymore. Anyway. Anymore. Though he used to. A long time ago. So what do you think? About the nightclub, that is. Why not? They wouldn't bother me none. I'm usually way up there. Okay. Imbibing. Ain't no music on earth that can reach where I go. Okay. Coexisting with a with a nightclub? Alright. Might even be nice to have some company. Weird. What a weird location this is. A church that's a nightclub, a church of silence, and also some weird sort of scientific radio computer pale study place. He said that in spite of himself. He's more attached to the human than he'd like to think. Because so, standing in the middle here is like, it sounds like the pale. It's so strange. You've been in here a long time. Do you know why the church was abandoned? Police raid a while back. Police raid? Did you witness it? Not really. Or at least I don't remember much of it anymore. The mother's love has done its job. That's what's so great about the mother. It lets you forget about everything. Okay then, thanks. I'm sure we'll revisit and come back to that one. 
let's have a look at the equipment now. So we've discovered our crab man, who's more like a spider, but is supposed to be some sort of flame. A portable Harman Wauschi tape recorder. Is it possible it's recording something? Someone's siphoning electrical current from outside into this antenna. Two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tape spinning on empty. And then... Shattered glass. I'm just trying to have a look at this imagery. Looks crazy. A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer. And this time it's already turned on. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks. Alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yes, but this machine looks just like the one in the doomed commercial area. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. The one you saw earlier was the Ream Civic. This is the Ream Prefect. A model number RC7024. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible interim printer. The Ream Prefect is the governmental version of the commonly used Ream Civic model. Although mostly based on the same technology, the Ream Prefect is equipped with better noise attenuation circuits. Wait, let me just investigate it. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Look inside the compartment. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. Hmm. Another filament memory. Press play to talk with the repeater. Press play. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good afternoon. Mm. This is the East Insulin Dian Repeater Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? This is the same, so this, the same repeater station, the same woman that we spoke to on the previous radio computer we went through uh, in the commercial district. And she's going to ask us for a password or something like the other one. And we're going to be like, uh, nothing. It's the same old woman you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. Is Yvonne. I looked inside the core, but the tape on the filament just said log, February to March. Good. Please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. What if I reach into the deep recesses of my mind? Maybe he knows something. The lieutenant nods towards Tiago. Is it my birthday? Okay. This is just the same stuff as last time. Received. I will register this login attempt. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Fortress accident? Like the one in the doomed commercial area? I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez. One on Saint Brune, the other on Rue de saint Guilaine. Saint Brune, that's the church. And Rue de Saint Guilaine, that's the doomed commercial area. Anything else I can help you with? Thanks, but I'm finished with this call. Goodbye, Fortress Accident. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Okay. Let's try. 
Let's, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a run in here again now. I'm, I'm running. Let's let's talk to this guy. See if he knows the password. If he's heard it being spoken. Oh, hey, Wei. There's coffee in the back. Oh, Wei. I meant the mother's love. Coffee in the back? Coffee in the back. Something familiar about that. Coffee and stale cookies. Okay. What was that about coffee? I feel like I've heard it somewhere before. Look, man. I'm at liberty to talk about the sacred blaze of the mother's glorious heart, but not about the coffee. Okay. Have you by any chance heard the Vieta say the password to a radio computer? Too many times, Esse. You need it for something. Surveys are a good way to fish for personal information, especially in the name of public safety. Okay. We're getting, we're getting very sneaky about it. Yes, it's for a first-degree murder investigation in Martinez. The lieutenant raises his eyebrow, but doesn't say anything. Don't swear, Vato. The password is afterlife death. Afterlife death. That is true. But what comes after death? What you think of that? Makes me almost pity la nilita pequeña when I hear it. Hmm. I think we're done here, Esse. Oh. The figure crawls off into the darkness above. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still <coughs> not sure how it's relevant to our investigation. Okay, so he only stays down there so we can get the password. Life after death. Hopefully there's a lot of marshmallows after death. I would like to... Live, sleep, and eat marshmallows in peace. A peaceful life. After death, of course. The machine's keyboard. The speaker comes. Good afternoon. Stress accident on San Brun. This is the East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Let's try this again. I think I may have the right password for the personal log. Good. Please repeat the password. After life, death. Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. This is cool. This is going to be our first time... This is going to be our first time actually accessing a radio computer and seeing what it's all about. Because we still need to figure out the password for the, the one in the commercial district. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Alright, now that we've done that, I'm going to... I'm going to... I want to choose this. Yvonne, it's me again. How are you? Good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Repeat. Is this the personal log? <laughs> She's just like, nah, I don't know if I recognize you. Alright, bye. Goodbye. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated. Press print. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. Read the printout. The first entry made on the 4th of February, 51, by an unknown author, is short and concise. Arrived at the church, the door was boarded up, so I used the crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. Smash the window to get the electricity in, it seems. Use the crowbar. That might be what we need. If we can hopefully obtain that so we can get the ice cream container open. The lieutenant leans closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath. 4th of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Do you think this log might be connected to the case? Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local eccentric. Read the second entry. 6th of February, 51. Had a little chat with the local fishermen. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. See? Even one of the spookers themselves says it's unnerving. Read the third entry. 7th of February, 51. Finally got the electricity in. 
Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series, something advanced. Why would she need an antenna? Why would anyone need any of this equipment here? Read the fourth entry. 8th of February, 51. Bought the antenna. Had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. Okay, we've got some names. But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers though, they're fucked. I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup. When the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. A data loss? Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data getting destroyed and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading. Artists, programmers, Lexi. Who are the, all these people? I think these people worked in the radio computer games business. The one we saw in the Doom commercial area. They must be our former co-workers. Okay. Read the fifth entry. 12th of February, 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. Keep reading. I'm interested now. <laughs> I want to know what's that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. So it's very interesting that we poke our noses in stuff that Kim is initially kind of hesitant or careless about. And he's like, eh. And then we get into it. And he's like, I want to know. Tell me. Keep reading. I'm interested. Read the 6th century. 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment, but I did discover a curious audio spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. The Swallow. Is she talking about? The Lieutenant looks to his right toward the silence. Read the seventh entry. 28th of February. 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? But what could it be? Look at the water basins behind you. The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. Read the eighth entry. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music, one neo-disco song, over and over again. <laughs> Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say, hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. Okay, so that would have been a cell. That disco man must be a cell. She must be describing a cell. The girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. Read the ninth entry. March 51. I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the radio computer in our old office in Martinez. Can't do anything about it. The storekeeper still doesn't want to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm part of some kind of curse. How Martinez of her. 
Oh, uh, that's so funny. I wonder if that so that radio computer is, to, is is tied to these same people. I wonder if it's the same password. If we go back there and do the password life uh, after life death. No, sorry. Pff, wait, what was the password? What was the password again? Was it death after life or after life death? It was after life death. Yes. Yes. That's me. I was the one who broke into that radio computer, and the storekeeper must be Placent. I knew it wasn't a good idea to meddle with the machine. Okay. No, no. It was a great idea. You're learning things. This is how you learn things about machines. Thank you, Interfacing. Read the 10th entry. March 51. A new 2 meter aux cable. Noodles. Crackers. Ping ping energy drinks. Water. Toothpaste. Gum. Also, some canned air. Ping ping energy drinks. Your reading was interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. Oh, it was loud. I think we've got our, uh... We, we may have, uh, her returning and being like, What are you doing on my computer? A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. Oh, hello. Suna, the programmer. She's walking in here, too. Just like we were told to. Uh, hey, we're just, uh... What's up? It was it was on it was on when we got here, um, and we thought we might be able to find the owner and then get in contact with them and let them know that they they their fridge was running. Breaking into my radio computer, I see. She glares at you as she holds down the off button for several seconds. The machine reboots. No, no, um, it was it was it was actually quite it was on. I mean, it was on. Um, yeah. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. We're here on a side case representing certain music venue organizers. Well, you won't find any music venue organizers here. She barely looks up from the keyboard. You hear the machine whir back to life. It's just me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her after she has rebooted the machine. All right. After she has rebooted the machine. Uh, but, however, there's more to do. We can have a look at uh, the shattered glass as well as speaking to the programmer who has rocked up, which I did not expect, uh, which may lead into an interesting and long conversation. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this episode to a close for now, and then we're going to have a chat to her next time. So we can look forward to that and exploring more of the, the church fisherman shack area as we're still continuing with day four at 5.30 p.m. So we've still got much more to look forward to. So thank you so much for joining me for today's episode, and I'll see you next time.